tis the season as they say and i am busy doing a lot of pet portraits hey everybody i'm suzanne and today we're going to paint well we're going to paint two little critters we're going to paint a beautiful dog a, a mastiff named uh zion and his rabbit friend zeppelin and i'm going to go ahead and show you the photo reference that i'm using for this painting and the completed piece now this was a fun, this was fun because the challenge came where, well, one, I'm putting a very large dog in with a small rabbit and then doing it all on a very small um, substrate. I'm doing it on an eight by 10 by two. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a cradled panel. So it's all wood. So when you have a very large animal, like a dog, a mastiff, and you are also painting a very small animal like a rabbit. That's a challenge because you want to create enough detail for both of the uh, animals in the painting to be, you know, to have that significance. But you can see what a tender dog uh, Zion was. And to be able to be this large and powerful a beast <laughs> and be this gentle and sweet with a rabbit. So that's what today's painting's all about. So thanks. You know, go ahead and sit back and watch or paint along if you want to. Um, I'll go over all the, um, you know, the palette that I'm going to be using. And don't hesitate to ask questions. Just leave them in the comment section and I'll get to you. And I want to thank all my uh, all my supporters here on YouTube. Uh, my, you know, all my subscribers, my members, and everybody that kind of tunes in to watch the videos. You guys make this fun for me. So let's go ahead and jump into Zion and Zeppelin's portrait. The palette we're going to use for Zion and Zeppelin's portrait is as follows. I have Raw Sienna, Michael Harding. I have, um, hmm, this is Transparent Brown Oxide by Winsor Newton. This is Raw Umber by Winsor Newton. Burnt Umber by Michael Harding. I have Michael Harding's Burnt Sienna. Um, hmm. Lou Ridge Yellow Ochre, Michael Harding uh, Yellow Lake Deep. I have Ivory Black Windsor Newton, Titanium White Windsor Newton. Blue Ridge Ultramarine Blue, Michael Harding Pale Violet. This is what we're gonna start with, and I'm sure we might add a few more colors, but you know what, let's just see where we can go with this. Here is our setup. Now we have Zion. Um, he was a bull mastiff or a mastiff. And obviously his little friend here is Zeppelin the rabbit. And I think it's what an unlikely pair, right? And from what I understand, this boy here was a sweetheart, a 160 pound sweetheart that just loved, loved, loved. And unfortunately he has passed away. And uh, this is a, this will be a Christmas gift. Um, a friend is giving to her husband. Both of them are friends of mine. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna jump into this little portrait. So you can see my setup. I've got my paints over here. I've got my um, my uh, picture that I'm working from here. And so I oftentimes just do a loose sketch just so I can get a feeling of size comparison, how things are in relationship to other things. So oftentimes when I'm looking at my reference, I'm looking at how far is it from the top um, how far above this part is the head from the rabbit, etc., etc. I'm always looking for size comparisons. And so I'm just kind of getting a feel, getting my feel, so to speak. So initially, I go in really light with the paint. And so that's what we're going to do here. Because I often morph through my work, as you know. You guys have seen me doing this enough that. You know, I may determine that, oh, look, I need to go up a little bit higher on this side or et cetera. Um, I just went and got my uh, medium cups. Basically, I, I only use paint thinner. I use a uh, Gamsol only to clean my brush off. I use it very little during the painting, unless it's the very beginning stages of a painting. And I also use uh, linseed oil, and that's pretty much it. So just to kind of get my bearings, I'm going to actually take a small brush and use this transparent brown mixed with raw umber and I'm mixing a little bit of paint thinner and a little bit of oil I'm just getting my sizes because I think I may actually uh, from here up, um, I want to work 
back. So if I determine that this needs to go back a little bit, I will. Um, and I think it does go back a little bit more. So where I had initially done this drawing, we're gonna pull that back a little bit. And, cause he is a, he is a big mastiff and they're not exactly little dogs. So oftentimes it just, you know, the very beginning stages and I'm using this very transparent kind of colors right now just to get my, where everything's going. So it's almost like a sketch in the beginning stages and I am using a pretty small brush. Um, now I could actually do some wiping out too to just do my lighter values in here. And so if I, so a lot of times I'll, I'll actually curl my um, brush strokes to match the, um, the direction that the, the dog's head is going. So I'm again taking a little bit of paint thinner, a little bit of oil, just because I just want to. So if I know that the eye area, almost look, I'm always looking for shapes. Um, looks like a triangle here or like a diamond really and um, and this comes down a little bit more I think you know I, I I'm just so intrigued by the fact that this big dog is just he's conversing with this rabbit and uh, Rabbit seems pretty okay with it too. I've had rabbits before as uh, as pets, and they're, for lack of a better word, they're pretty ballsy. They're for an animal that is so tiny. They are uh, they're funny to me. They're really funny. Um, so I'm just kind of very loosely suggesting where a lot of my colors are going, um, because like I said, I am very likely or subject to change. Now I, I did put. cool colors down too and I'm, I'm gonna make a gray just and I know I'm I usually don't use any whites this early on in a piece but again, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna suggest that there's a lot of light in this area light hairs you know it looks like um, Zion was pretty old maybe in this picture or getting older Maybe he wasn't old, but so I could see we're bringing this down a little bit. So you can see what I, I mean about morphing. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this in a little bit darker here. And this comes over now. This is actually, I think, it, this is more a portrait of, of him, the dog than it is of the uh, rabbit, although it is somewhat of a double portrait. eyebrows and I'm going to add a little bit of burnt umber to this mix and I'm just following along with what I'm seeing here so I like I said, if I end up changing and morphing over to the side, it's, it's not uncommon for me to do that. It's got these rolls. And 
Unfortunately, the photo reference that I have is slightly cut off, and so it's, it's left for me to kind of fill in the blanks, so to speak. So at this, at this stage, I'm also, the substrate I'm working on is a uh, slick gessoed panel. Very early stages of a painting, it's often very um, rough, <laughs> for lack of a better word. I'm cleaning that off and I'm going back in with my transparent colors that I was using earlier because I don't want to create um, anything that I'm going to have to correct later. So it's just, I, it's just really like a place marker. Now there's the dog and this rabbit are actually sitting on a couch, I guess, or the rabbit is sitting on the couch and the dog is just leaning over, just looking at him. <laughs> and uh, I think it's, it's adorable. It's an actually adorable photo. So I'm taking a little bit of burnt umber and mixing that in here, getting a little bit more intense with my color. Even though this is still very transparent, I know that there's gonna be some corrections. this edge of the ear. I kind of left it kind of clean there. Maybe that sun's coming in now. So even if today the only thing I get in here is these um, I call just the blocking in I feel like I'll be okay because this will dry interesting how this is there's a lot of fabric and stuff here so we're just gonna block everything in I'm taking the same approach to blocking in Zeppelin as I did Zion I am just very lightly the paint is very thin and I am painting on this very slick surface so I just need to have a little bit of paint down for the rest of the paint to grip so to speak but I'm just blocking everything in and looking where the dark values are etc etc and everybody knows I like to have a wet edge so I've got to paint some of the background in and my client did ask that I not paint you know the sofa and the chair and all the stuff behind um, them in the uh, photo reference but I am keeping it quite neutral and keeping every all the colors basically the same because I think that makes for a very homogeneous looking piece but I do have to have my uh, my wet edges to work into and to make corrections and so oftentimes I'll use the background colors to reposition an eyebrow or lengthen an, another area so I am just uh, you know putting in the same same in 
uh, both the dog and the rabbit. Basically, all the colors are very homogenous. Um, and I think that's what makes this particular piece quite successful. So you can see here I am creating my soft edges. And I'm using a, a red dot, which is a a synthetic sable brush, which is great for slick surfaces as this is. This is a super, super soft, slick surface. And if I used a really coarse brush, it would create a lot of uh, paint lines, you know, just drag lines, and I don't want that. So this brush is doing the trick. And I'm just laying in everything here and uh, blocking everything in and getting my soft edges and all that good stuff. I'm working on the little bunny right now, and that's Zephyr the Bunny. What a very fancy name for a little rabbit. All right, so I'm, I'm kind of... The colors are actually quite cool, but I'm trying to get the right color that I'm mixing off to the side using the um, yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna, and a little bit of the pale violet and titanium white. And he's got like kind of funky long hair. And I'm just kind of popping that in. It's a little bit warmer than I'm doing this, so I'm gonna put a little bit more. Let's see if that does it. A little bit more white in it. I keep I can't quite get the color that I want. Okay, let's try that. And I'm using a number four Eclipse filter. And I'm using the edge, because I can. The edge will give me that little sharp point. And I'll, I'll just kind of put some of these lighter, these lighter chunks of hair in here. Funny little bunny. <laughs> He's got this funny hair. There we go. I'm gonna to have to switch to a smaller brush. And I'm switching back over to the Zero Clips Along Filbert. And Funny little little hairdo on this this bunny. Zeppelin. What an impressive name for a little rabbit. What's interesting is you can tell that uh, Zion, the dog here, is a sweetheart. If he's not like you know chomping down on this rabbit. Values 
So sometimes I go back and forth between different colors. Sometimes it's easier if I just work around from one area to the next. Taking a little raw umber and raw sienna. Just going back in between these hairs. So sometimes you can paint the hair by painting the area behind it. And he does have this little bit of a darker area here. I'm painting the little areas in between, basically the negative space of these little hair areas that I've, these little funky hairdo that this rabbit seems to be sporting. Funny little bunny. And again, I'm using mainly um, raw umber. Now, this rabbit is going to be coming coming out a little bit more here. Um, than what I initially had done. So he's got this ear here. Let's see if we can't get that in. sunshine coming in my window here feels so good. It's early <laughs> still. It's 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 funny. You've heard me say it before. I have a love-hate relationship with this uh, this window because in the winter time at this time of the day, oh, it feels so nice. But later on, it will be actually quite hot. today <clears throat> when I'm actually painting this piece it won't air till next week I guess but um it's actually the day before Thanksgiving and I got a lot of work to do y'all all right so I'm just kind of putting some of the dark values into this ear generous with this rabbit's um, body. So I'm bringing this down. This 
So where I have this coming out here, we're gonna bring it out that much more. <laughs> what a funny little pair this, these guys seem to be. darker value I'm using raw umber and I'm kind of curling around the way his his fur goes here now there's a lot of lighter values but it's not quite this warm um, so I'm gonna go back in with this cooler version like this like a little angora rabbit or angora rabbit mix. I'm not really sure what this, what this kind of crazy hair. This crazy little bunny. And remember folks, if you have questions about anything I'm covering in this, you know, sometimes I just, I won't always call out what I'm doing. Um, so you can always ask me. Just like in the comment section. rather start this ear a little bit big and then use my lighter values later. So I'm going to because it kind of comes down to here and then comes down. And I'll be putting in the light values too, but A funny little car just pulled in across the street. It looks like a green, weird green Porsche, and I like I like uh, green. That seems like an unusual color for that kind of car. Just saying. Maybe I'm classic in that way. I just think it should be that color. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure this guy doesn't care. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's like, I have a Porsche, and I don't care. I don't really care about your opinion. <laughs> Sorry, I digress. All right, so I'm just putting these, I'm using the, the raw umber and trying to get the little details And 
I'm just mixing a lot. I kind of he's got a darker nose, and I I'm and it's overshadowed by Zion, you know, just giving this little bunny a whole smooch. And um, I think it's precious. And I, I can feel how much this dog and this rabbit are loved. And the fact that the, the dog and the rabbit seem to enjoy each other too. Oops, that little bit of yellow got in there. using titanium white, ivory black, and a little ultramarine blue. Another little leg. Right, or foot right there. And you know, sometimes when you can't really see what's going on, don't make it up. Just paint what you see because um, I know that's kind of uh, sounds like a weird thing to say, but I don't want to assume anything. a lot of smoke. I think it's a diesel truck. Okay, so you can barely see that I'm actually adding a pupil to this eye. I'm going to add some light to his eye anyway. And I'm just going to take a little tiny bit of this um, it's actually a pale violet. It's just enough to give that little bunny a little spark in its eye. And I know the eyeball is round, so a lot of times I'll roll my little spark. so I can make that hair on his head stand out.
mat that I stand on because I, I generally stand when I paint. And folks, I hurt my knee the other day. So I am feeling it. Alright, so I'm, I'm the edge of this rabbit's ear is kind of turned up a little bit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and emphasize that just a little bit. You can tell when it's it's getting to be that holiday season when I'm watching all the um, delivery people, FedEx, UPS, mail carriers, whatever. They're just, they're already hustling. It's starting to be that time of the year, folks. Lightening up some of these hairs in the ear. And the same on this other ear. So I'm just taking a little bit of white and hoping that it's it's still a little bit wet um, and it's the light is just catching that just a little bit Since this is the holiday season and I'm busy doing holiday commissions, this is what you guys get to look at right now. Um, curious. Now, since it is the day before Thanksgiving, and by the time you get to see this, it will be after Thanksgiving. So tell me something, you know, tell me a little, um, I don't know, a holiday tradition that you guys celebrate. And um, just leave it in the comments section. I'd love to he have a conversation about that. You know, to hear what everybody else does, whether it, whether it doesn't have to be just Thanksgiving, it could be Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever um, holiday you happen to celebrate. I'm curious. I, I love to hear different folks um, way that they celebrate the holidays. At this point, I'm feeling pretty confident that I've got Zion down. He's, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing out his little body a little bit more and just kind of moving things around just a tiny bit, but I, I feel pretty good about this. Um, so I'm going to actually pull out um, the dog, or Zion, I'm sorry, the rabbit is Zeppelin, the dog is Zion. So I'm bringing out the dog's uh, nose area and muzzle just a little bit more because there's that overlap. They're sniffing noses, which is absolutely adorable. And uh, this just kind of gives you an idea of what a sweet guy um, Zion was. This dog is beautiful, and he has a beautiful soul to go along with his cute, adorable face. So I'm bringing his muzzle out just a tiny bit. Um, he is a mastiff, so of course he does have a little bit of a, a blunter uh, muzzle than some other breeds. But, you know, I'm just trying to get all the characteristics and I'm starting to think about where to put the detail now he's got this incredibly wrinkled up forehead because he's really thinking about this rabbit you know so his eye his eyebrows are lifted up he's got some wrinkles in his forehead so I got to get all those in too but I'm making sure like the ear is approximately where it needs to be etc etc everything in relationship to where the other things are so whether it's where the ear is the base of the ear is towards the bottom of the dog's head how much distance is left there how much distance from the side of the ear to where the eye is or the angle from the nose to the ear all of that is it comes into account so I'm always looking always watching and always adjusting if I need to
there's not a lot of detail uh, in the eye in this particular photo reference. So I'm trying to give it everything that I can based on the photo reference that I'm working from. But uh, Zion has a little bit of age in his muscle here. So we're putting in some of the grays. And I'm using a small uh, zero uh, pointed round of um, Rosemary's, I guess it's an eclipse. And just kind of popping in some of the, the fur, the light hairs that you see here. And creating those you know, whisker tracks and wrinkles that uh, dogs do have in their muzzle too. So I'm, I'm just trying to get in some of the detail and his little, his little nose, we could see everything. I mean, it's, it's all coming into focus here, right? Um, and I'm still bringing his nose and muzzle out just a tiny bit, but I've, I've got to get all the detail in all that, that uh, Zion has to offer. So I, you can see where I'm work, starting to work into some of the wrinkles in his, in his forehead. I just love his concentration as he's looking down on his little buddy, his little bunny buddy. But you can see the details are starting to go in. And uh, yeah, but I unfortunately, the only thing that you're seeing here is a little bit of shine in his lower lid. Um, and that's where I'm, I'm capturing the detail as much as I can in his eye. Um, I'm just getting everything in. Um, and I'm, again, I'm, I'm just kind of scooting around the painting all over. And I will have to adjust all the fabric that they're laying in with the correct wrinkles. But I did want to keep all the colors pretty homogenous uh, because I just think that's what pulls this whole painting together.
Now to just put the last little bit of detail into the fabric. And they're laying there and I'm just, I want to keep everything kind of homogenous. So I'm looking, I'm looking and just going in with some of the darker values and knowing that my light source seems to be coming from the right back. I know that it's going to be lighter in some areas of the fabric, but the immediate foreground is not going to be quite that um, light. So I kind of have to look. I'm looking and looking. So that's why if it seems like it seems like I'm not doing anything, it's I'm actually looking. I'm thinking about what needs to go in. And I determined that, you know, I've, I've got to do the folds. And folks, there is a, a video that I have out on painting folds in fabric that if you want to just see a concentrated, detailed version of painting fabric, you can take a look at that. But yeah, here I am. I'm staring at the piece. There you go. Sometimes things don't happen. But here we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and you know, I, I try to make um, the folds, you know, put the shadow underneath the rabbit or underneath the dog because that's where they're, you know, it's going to be the darkest. And then at the immediate crease, I'll go ahead and put the uh, lightest the lightest values in and yes you see me using my finger as a smudging tool you know I always tell my students do as I say not as I do because I don't think everybody should be putting uh, all this paint in their <laughs> into their skin but yeah I kind of do that sometimes so you can tell look I pulled that ear off to the side and that's more like what the actual photo reference of uh, the dog looks like that um, so it's it's funny how it just morphed into more of the photograph and I'm just putting the last little bit of details into the bunny. And, you know, this is fun. You know, this is the fun stuff. And I think we're done. And we are finished. Now, you can see the um, actual photo reference that I used of Zion and Zeppelin. And, um, and here is the painting. Now, there's not a lot of detail. Um, you know, y'all know how I love doing eyes. And, of course, Zeppelin, we can see his eye. But Zion's eye is kind of hidden, and you can barely see where the reflective light is around his uh, eyeball. But I think the whole sentiment of this particular painting is felt. Uh, Zion was a big sweetheart. From what I understand, he was 160 pounds, and uh, he, could, he had a very gentle side, right? He loved his little bunny friend. So, yeah, this, is, this, is, this has been a fun piece, and I hope you have enjoyed today's uh, video. And if you have, give me a thumbs up. And if you have any questions whatsoever about anything I covered in this painting, just you know, give me a holler. Leave it in the comment section, and I'll answer it. And, uh, yeah, we are finished. And here we are. Here's the finished piece. And you can see this was a lot of fun. And again, I go over the challenges in making a very large dog and a very small rabbit in a very small painting. Um, you know, you, you got to capture everything. You've got to get it all down. And I think I did that. Um, uh, my client did give me a pretty good reference. And unfortunately, this is a posthumous portrait of Zion. So there's not getting any more photos. And she, she gave me the two photos that she had. And this was the best one to work from. And she really wanted to capture the fact that this big boy was such a gentle, gentle fella. I mean, 160 pound mastiff, she said. And I thought, wow, that's a big dog. <laughs> and uh, and he is just so sweet and gentle with uh, his buddy Zeppelin here. So, yeah, this was a fun piece to do. And, um, yeah, you know, and I'll, I'll tell you guys, if by any chance if you're watching this video and you'd like a portrait of your dogs done for the holidays or for any time, know that it'll probably end up becoming a video. Um, I, I tell a lot of my clients that that's, hey, you know what? It's very likely that you're going to be able to see the process of my painting this portrait uh, through my YouTube and Patreon channel. So there you go. So you could be, you know, your dog or cat or horse or whomever can be famous on YouTube with its portrait being painted. <laughs> this is something fun, right? So again, thank you so much for joining me. And if you are my subscribers, as always, thank you so much. And to my members, thank you. And to everybody out there, uh, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.